Rwandan President Paul Kagame slammed the United States on Wednesday for raising concerns about Paul Rusesabagina, a United States permanent resident imprisoned in Rwanda. The 67-year-old Rusesabagina, who was portrayed as a hero in the film Hotel Rwanda, was sentenced to 25 years in prison last year on eight terrorism charges related to an anti-Kagame organization. He has denied all charges and has refused to participate in the trial, which he and his supporters have labeled a political sham. However, Paul Kagame has said that only an invasion of his country could compel him to do so. He challenged the justification for Rusesabagina's release while he was in Washington for a U.S.-Africa summit, questioning if it was because he was well-known and a citizen of the United States. The Rwandan president also questioned what his release would entail for the 20 other inmates who were tried alongside him. During the genocide, Mr. Rusesabagina worked as the manager of the Hotel de Mil Carlines in Kigali, which served as a setting for the film Hotel Rwanda. More than 1,000 people were at risk of being murdered in the hotel, although all of them survived. In view of this, President George W. Bush bestowed the Presidential Medal of Freedom on him. Mr. Rusesabagina has long been a critic of the Rwandan leader, who was once praised for bringing about peace, but has more recently come under fire for being a repressive strongman. Mr. Kagame enticed Mr. Rusesabagina to Rwanda under false pretenses in August 2020 from his home in Texas, where he was a permanent resident. According to reports, Mr. Rusesabagina, who is also a citizen of Belgium, had vowed never to go back to his home nation and thought he was traveling to Burundi. He was detained upon his arrival in Kigali and ultimately found guilty of taking part in ferocious rebel attacks inside Rwanda in 2018 and 2019. The State Department distinguished in May that Mr. Rusesabagina was being wrongfully detained, a status also granted to basketball star Brittany Griner while she was detained in Russia, and which effectively makes Mr. Rusesabagina a political prisoner. Rusesabagina has admitted to playing a leadership role in the Rwanda movement for democratic change, a group opposed to Kagame's rule, but denied any involvement for violent actions carried out by the Rwanda Movement for Democratic Change's armed wing, the National Liberation Front. Kalixt and Sabimana, popularly known as Sankara, a spokesman for the National Liberation Front, was one of 20 other defendants tried alongside him. He told the court that Rusesabagina was not a member of the armed wing. However, judges said the two groups were indistinguishable, referring to them as the Rwanda Movement for Democratic Change and National Liberation Front. When Mr. Blinken visited Kigali in August and had a meeting with the Rwandan president, he brought up Mr. Rusesabagina's case. In response to a query regarding Secretary of State Antony J. Blinken's pleas for Mr. Rusesabagina's release, Paul Kagame stated, We've made it clear there isn't anyone going to come from anywhere to bully us into something to do with our lives. Maybe make an invasion and overrun the country. You can do that. He continued in his address on the sidelines of the U.S.-Africa Summit event hosted by the news organization Semaphore. When asked if President Biden and him would have a private meeting during this week's summit, Mr. Kagame stated that he wasn't yet sure. Along with other issues pertaining to the country's human rights, Mr. Blinken pressed the Rwandan president on his nation's support for militias in eastern Congo. In reference to the conflict in the neighboring Congo, Mr. Kagame said on Wednesday, This problem was not created by Rwanda and is not Rwanda's problem. It is Congo's problem. They are the ones that have to deal with it. Human rights advocates have criticized Mr. Kagame's participation in the summit, so much so that an activist for sub-Saharan democracy in Africa, Jeffrey Smith, wrote this week in Time that Rwanda's president stands out as particularly cunning and ruthless in his full-throttle consolidation of political power back home. If you enjoyed this video, Watch also the next video on your screen which looks at how President Uweri Museveni slammed Europe of hypocrisy on climate policy as their energy crisis worsens. Be sure to give the video a like, leave a comment, 
and subscribe to the channel for more informative video contents.